Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how to use the Jamboard app. Um, I'm using an iPad, so for me I'm going to go to the Apple Store. Um, obviously if you're using an iPhone you can do that as well, but if you're using an Android device then do go to the Google Play Store. We're going to search for Jamboard. You can see the app there and you can see that I've already got that installed. So with my app installed I can open the app. And the first thing you can see here is a whole host of my jams. These are the files. Just to explain as well, Jamboard files are just like other files on your Google Drive. So when you create your file, it will also appear on your Google Drive. And then you can use that and move that, share that, just like other files. One thing to say about the app is, unlike a lot of other Google apps, the app has a lot more advanced features than the web version. So if possible, when using Jamboard, I would recommend using the app. The other benefit I've got is I'm using an Apple Pencil and so that may, means that writing on the app is a lot easier. So once we come to our dashboard in the bottom right hand corner I can click the plus icon to start a new jam. So the way jams are set up is by frames. I can see across the top I've got the moment one frame so if I click on there you can see that I can click the plus button to add more frames. And these are effectively like different pages on your jam. On the frames as well, you've got the three dots for more options. If I click this, I can duplicate, delete, or change the background. If I click on background, you can see a variety of different backgrounds on offer, such as dots, checks, lines, grade checks, and blue and black backgrounds. I can select that. I can also apply to all. It just change this back to white for just for the sake of our tutorial. So if I'm going to just minimize this frames screen. The other things I have on my screen, bottom right hand corner, undo and redo. Top right hand corner, I've got options to send to a Jamboard. So if I'm connected to a Jamboard, I could do that. We don't actually have any Jamboards in our organization, but that doesn't stop you using the app. Next to that, I've got three dots for more options. And again, this is where I can share with other people. So Jamboard is great for collaborating with projects and group work. You can star files that have been your Google Drive, more sharing options. I can then share the jam as a PDF. So this will PDF all of the frames. Um, if I do it as an image, it will just be the frame that I'm currently on. And then I've got other options to rename, copy and remove as well. So let's get back to the toolbar. So on the left hand side you can see the toolbar. If I click on the pen icon, which is the first option, it shows me I've got four different options of pen. I've also got the different colours, so if I want to I can start writing on my page. And that comes across there. Obviously I can change this. And it's a bit thicker this one. And then this one. So I find this one's a bit more like a highlighter pen, um, but actually isn't very good for highlighting. If you actually want to highlight, then the paintbrush tool is a lot better. Uh, let's go for a green, and I can highlight over the top of something like this. So that's so they're the different pens. But also under the pen tool, you have this assistive drawing. So let's change these back. So first of all, I've got a text one. So this changes my written text into digitized text. So if I write that out and it picks that up. Next I've got shapes, so I can draw a circle, a triangle, a square, or even a dodgy square, and all different types of shapes. So I can add different things in and it will pick up roughly what I'm trying to do. The next thing that you have though is an assisted drawing tool. Now this connects in with Google AI and so the idea is I can then draw something. So if imagine I was drawing a project and I was doing it at a house and then as I'm drawing it picks up ideas of what I might be drawing across the bottom. So you can see I can scroll across there and pick something that I might want to do. So obviously I might want to add more to this. Clearly my house is not a very good house and then I can pick something. Maybe I'll draw an animal. My very bad drawing, I don't know what it's gonna suggest here. 
There you go. Maybe it's best like a frog. So again, it's trying to pick up what your drawing might be and then give you better suggestions. Obviously, after you've got your pen tool, you've got your eraser tool. If I click on that, I can then start to erase um, things I've written. If I actually want to remove shapes and things like that, I then need to use the select tool to select those shapes, click on the dots and delete them that way. And the same with images. Back on the erase tool though, if I do double click that, it asks me if I want to clear the whole frame. So that would delete everything on this frame. So I'm not gonna do that for now. What I'm gonna do is go back into the select tool and show you how this can work in other scenarios. So if I do select my house, I can then pinch to enlarge that and minimize that. I can pin pinching, I can rotate that as well, move it around and place it on my document. So that works the same with the shapes. So I'm, I'm pinching to minimize that, to move it, and obviously to give me the options to duplicate or delete as well. After that, we've got our laser pointer. This is if you're giving a presentation, you can use this to highlight things and then that disappears. And after that, we have our plus icons. So this is other options where you can insert things into your slide. If I click on that, one is a sticky note. Sticky notes are very good for collaboration. So you can add your note. You can choose the color of your note. Once you're done, click the tick icon. And again, if I click on my select tool, that's where I can then move that around, resize it, rotate it, all those kind of things as well. Again, I can edit, duplicate or delete. I find with sticky notes, there is a limit to the amount of text that is shown on the sticky note. So do be aware of that if you're adding a lot of text to a sticky note. Next, if I click on the plus, I can see the images option. So I can do a search. So if I do a search for a cat, I can then select this. So this is a Google image search. And then again, with my select tool on, I can move that around. I can resize it. Just, you know, if I want to move out of my screen, I'm also just selecting off that pinching so I can zoom out of the frame as well. So the next tool, if I click on the plus, I've got my drive content so you can add things from your drive. So documents, PDFs, things like that. So I can click on here. So it's adding my PDF so I can move that around. I can rotate it. But if I want to actually get anything out of that, the best thing to do is click the dots to expand it. And that's where I can then drag pages out of my document. And then with those pages, I can expand them and rotate them, obviously place them on my screen as needed. So I'm just gonna go into a new slide because things were getting a bit cluttered. But if I click on the plus icon, we'll look at our last few options. One is a camera, and this allows you to take a photo of something and upload it. I can't do it now because it messes with the recording. I can click on image library, and that goes to your device and the image is there. And the last one is stickers. It gives you a few options here. If I insert that, now using the select tool, you can resize that, but I find when it's quite small, it's quite hard to do. So if I actually enlarge the page by zooming in, then select it, then I can in increase the size of my stickers or other small objects. So I hope this guide has given you a good introduction to Jamboard and that it will help you in working well with others.